Is it a morning? <laughs> well, isn't it good to be at Creative Morning? <laughs> um, so, just a little about us real quick. My name is Rose. I studied music. I love to sew and I'm really bad at it. And, um, yeah, that's me really. I don't know how to use microphones. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. What? Urban designer. Yeah, oh, that's what I was saying. Um, yeah, I'm an urban designer by trade and um, basically got into this game by being made redundant and going, I should do something with all of that stuff that's sitting in my spare room. So, yeah, that's kind of how our story started. Yeah. Um, so, just a bit about people. But as for people who don't know, we've got a store in K Road and we sell like vintage clothes and handmade gifts from New Zealand hands. Some of you are here and it's really nice to see you. And um, we also have started selling really delicious tea. Yeah. So, this is us in 2011. <laughs> <laughs> so, as we touched on a little bit earlier, I had basically a room full of vintage clothing that I really should have done something with. I had this problem where I would <laughs> see things in op shops that were beautiful, and even though I couldn't fit them myself or they wouldn't look good on me, I just had to not have them sitting there rotting in a dirty, dirty old op shop. So I'd buy them and then basically just store them in this room. Um, she had a whole room when I met her. The floor was covered in rubbish bags full to the brim of vintage clothes. It and was, I was so like, bad. Yeah, you need to sell these, <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, got made redundant, so thought, cool, this is a great opportunity. I was living in um, a terrace apartment, which at the bottom had a retail space, um, which we were using as our lounge. So um, I started planning this vintage shop. Having met Rose um, and seeing how alike we were and how Rose used to always say, we're the same person. We really are pretty much the same person. Um, we think alike, we look alike, we dress alike. Um, so I thought, great, she's probably a really good person to start a business with. And thankfully she was. Um, so we got planning and this was the result. Um, we basically did a fit out for no money. Um, we had zero capital. Yeah, so that was trade me, Sarah's given to us, given to us. Mum yeah. bought that for us for eight bucks. That was 50 <laughs> bucks. And that's a piece of wood with hooks on it. So, and that's from the inorganics. So, <laughs> and you know, that's just your $2 lanterns or whatever. So that was, it was, we're really, really proud that we actually made something from nothing. <laughs> Literally from nothing. Um, Thanks, mum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and basically we had such a great response and people loved the sound of what we were doing um, because instead of just selling vintage clothes, we decided, hey, wouldn't it be great to sell New Zealand made products? Wouldn't it be cool that people that sell things at markets have somewhere to sell stuff all week? Um, and they don't have to sit there behind a store all day. So we started a renting system where um, creatives could basically stock their stuff in our shop. They would get 100% of the profit, but they would pay us a weekly rental fee, just like a store at a market. Um, and that went really, really well. On the first day that we opened, we had a queue outside of our shop because Viva had ever so kindly put an ad about us in there and we got the fright of our lives when we went to open our door and there was a huge queue down the street and we were like, 
what the heck? <laughs> and we um, basically, everyone loved the idea of what we were doing, which, I mean, we loved the idea of what we were doing, but we weren't sure whether other people would. So it was very, very encouraging. And um, that first year was a really, really great one. Um, and I think we can probably move on to the next slide. So at the end of the year, 2012 maybe was the beginning of the anyway um <laughs> we pretty much went hey this is really cool we love what we're doing but the store doesn't really represent us or where we want to go with it so we renovated yeah, and we did it it didn't represent yeah yeah um we renovated in about three weeks and we spent about a thousand dollars on the fit out which was really big for us but if any of you in retail so you know that, that is unheard of <laughs> And we were really proud of that. Um, and so we just wanted like a sleek, modern take on, I don't know, whatever we were doing and let the product speak out. So as you can see, the only real color is everything that we had. And um, uh, it was really cool when we did that. We got lots of new fans and customers and these really cool girls that would walk past our store every day actually came in for the first time and were like, yes, we got you. <laughs> um, yeah, um, I think that's about it. And so we did, um, we tried to represent our brand a little bit by doing lookbooks, um, just kind of exploring this whole thing that we had never really thought about, which was having a business, you know, and doing branding. And uh, so we did this lookbook um, pretty much that I shot that was just, uh, trying to represent the feel of our shop because if you know vintage, there's only one. And if you do a lookbook and when it sells, it's that photo is redundant. So we just did it for the feel. And um, yeah, that got a lot of new interest as well. We learned about the power of advertising. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. <laughs> <laughs> I highly recommend advertising and marketing and branding. <laughs> Um, oh, look, look what happened to the chief. Oh, sorry. Brand <laughs> we did some Brandon. Yeah. <laughs> we did some Brandon. Um, this was our first attempt at some branding. <laughs> some Brandon. Um, <laughs> Who's here called Brandon? <laughs> this is for you, Brandon. Um, and we basically tried to bring like a bit of, I don't know, vintage feel slash sunshiny yellow, we love floral <laughs> kind of thing. Um, once again, just done on the cheap, like we literally made it in 30 minutes. We got a poor student to make that for free. Suckers! <laughs> it's pretty much story of our life, eh? <laughs> Um, yeah, poor, really. so at the end of that year, once again, we were restless and as they say yeah. about any relationship after two years, you should know if it's something that you want to continue, right? Yeah. Anyone there today? No, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, it's make or break time, people. It's make or yeah, break. Yeah, you've got to decide. Um, but anyway, we were like, it would be really easy to stay in our shop and just continue to survive. Like, we're doing mm. okay each week. But we'd like to just see if it would do really well. And so... Um, space at issue too, right? Yeah, Such space. a space issue. Yeah, it was very limiting because there's so much that we love to buy, especially Sarah. Um, <laughs> and stock. So many cool <laughs> creative people that would come to us and we're like, oh, we want to stock this, but we have no room. Yeah, for sure. Yep. And so we were on a hunt for a building for about six months and then mum, she, <laughs> she found this really cool one on K Road, which is where we are now. It's three levels. It's um, about 200. 50 square meters all that and for about two months we honestly work, just worked so hard me and Sarah counted our bruises and scratches one day and it was like 15 or 20 each and it was really sad no could wear shorts in summer <laughs> um and so we just painted it so um here is oh we painted it and there was like a fake ceiling that we ripped out and we did the floors because it had five layers of tar and glue and tiles yeah. and the gathering hunt girls saw how crap it was <laughs> and i want you to say how yeah it sucked it was horrible <laughs> they work upstairs now which is really cool um yeah so we just wanted to do it once and do it right yep. and um so this is what it looked like before um, oh, it's a terrible photo. <laughs> it's the only <laughs> one I had, so. But 
it but doesn't but look as bad as it smelled. I'll tell you what. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So this is kind of the process. And so this was the fake ceiling. <laughs> and if I don't know if you remember, oh, and there it's like we ripped that out and. Yeah. yeah. Um. So yeah, and we also did really nice lighting <laughs> that we're still paying off. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Don't underestimate how much lighting will cost. Wow. <laughs> oh, yeah. So we previously had no capital and we built everything off profits that we had earned in the previous last two stores. But this one, we just really needed help. So we got, a, still for retail, quite a small loan and we just reused everything and we did everything ourselves and so we really um, kept it in-house and we're really yeah. happy with the result yeah. yeah still for what when pe we tell people how much we spent on it they're just like you did you actually do that for that money <laughs> like it was basically very very minimal budget seemed so big for us but in terms of retail renovations was still like minuscule yeah. so we we're very very happy and that's mainly because we did everything ourselves yeah um it's really funny when we made this slide we were like Sarah, you're just so good, like, you know, <laughs> but looking at our progress, just saying, we, we didn't really know what oh, we're saying now. Oh, I see now. what you're saying, yeah, yeah I'm, you I'm, I'm on your mind right you now. <laughs> what Rose is saying is that I think we were so confused about why the, <laughs> the Creative Mornings people were like, oh, yeah, of course these girls should talk, and we were like, I just don't, we don't get it, like, why would they want us to talk to all these people, <laughs> and then when we started to the slideshow we were like whoa we're awesome we look have what we did <laughs> <laughs> like we have come so far um and i think as creative people and i've definitely learned this with my music it's really nice to just say hold on a second you're doing good girlfriend yeah. you're doing good yeah um, girl. So <laughs> this is it now. Um, I couldn't really find great pictures, so I did close-ups. This is our pride and joy. We made a, a designed a peg wall so we can remove the shelving. It's really cool. Yeah, we get really bored with layouts, so that is great because yeah. it means we can just take it down and reorganize it. Um, I swear we'll get to backwards stuff soon. Yeah, real soon. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's really cool. And this is our lookbook that was... Just on the cheap, I'll just tell you, 27 bucks, and that was just for pizza for everyone in the team. <laughs> Otherwise, it was completely free. How great is that? Um, so with the new store, we rebranded. We did the logo, which we thought was kind of vintage and modern-y, and the girl is sweet and feminine that we think this store is kind of like, but, you know, it doesn't have to be necessarily cutesy. You know, it's kind mm. of for thinking, so that was that. Yeah, we kind of got really sick of the word cute, <coughs> which uh, I think really I made us want to rebrand because we we're like, we're not cute. Mm. We're edgy and modern. We're cool. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah's got a design, a degree in like design, so she has to, you know. Like, I'm so sick of this word cute. It means adorably ugly. We do not want to be associated with that word. <laughs> Our first store was pretty cute though, eh? Adorably <laughs> ugly. It was adorably <laughs> ugly. <coughs> oh, okay. So this is... Um, one thing that we also do is um, we create our own brand called Jam, um, which at the moment is only very, very small, but we're hoping to expand because what we've learned from our new shop is, strangely enough, what um, Rose and I design and make is actually the best seller in our new shop. So we're like, hey, we should really capitalize on this. We should maybe put some time and energy into this. So finally, for the first time, Rose and I are able to actually set aside time where we create our own brand and our own image through products which we're really excited about because we do come from a craft do-it-yourself kind of background um just to sit down. Um, yes <laughs> and um, we've actually set a really big goal for ourselves we're one of the main sponsors for the Auckland Art and Craft Fair this year which is in June if you're not going you should go um, and because we're one of the main store uh, main where am I going yeah, with this store. we're having a stall and it's all going to be our own product and our goal is to fill it up yeah fill it yeah. up with jam so backwards. we're going to talk about backwards now how, how are we doing for time anyway yeah, are we getting the wine? Yeah, yeah, the 10 minutes, that was good. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay, so this month's theme is backwards, and we got asked to do it because obviously we sell things from behind, from the past. 
Um, the best way I can really describe our store to lots of people who don't get the maybe indie culture is we do like granny stuff. <laughs> Vintage, <laughs> knitting, crochet, tea, that kind of stuff. But for people our age and stuff. So we're a pretty good bet for this whole backwards thing. Um, but we also, after we got the thing, we realised we do business a little bit backwards when we were kind of reviewing what we've done. We kind of realised from the beginning, the only thing we set before budgets and business plans was we put down our core values that we always wanted to follow. And even though we've gone through so many changes um, and our products are still the same, but our values are still the same as well. And um, yeah, and so we're going to talk a bit about how the values that we had are different to big businesses that um, that just put profits first when we really just try to do integrity. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if I had anything else to say for that. <laughs> <laughs> so these um, are our values. Um, I just realised that our fonts, like, changed. Oh. Yeah, never mind. That's totally irrelevant to this talk. <laughs> 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 so bad. Um, so basically these were the values we set from the beginning. We wanted to be personal and friendly. We wanted to feel like anyone could come up to us and talk to us um, about anything and we wanted that to be kind of like first and foremost. We were so sick of walking into shops, especially quite a few vintage ones, not necessarily just in Auckland but like all over the place. Um, and you just weren't cool you enough. You, you weren't yeah, you just cool weren't cool enough. Be. You obviously weren't wearing the right thing and they'd kind of look at you and go, not worth my time kind of <laughs> thing. And we were just a little bit sick of that. We wanted to feel like anyone could come into our shop and anyone would feel, you know, appreciated and so welcome. Um, we wanted and to we did the bottomless teapot for that. Oh, so yeah. In our old store when it was, um, we didn't sell tea, we could give it away. We had um, a teapot that was always heated and so people could come and just sit and sit chat and, and do chat. their knitting projects on the couch while we do ours really badly. <laughs> um, and, yeah, so we, w even though it's really good to set values, but it's better to set actual things that will put them into function. Yeah. So our bottomless teapot was yeah. that. And um, we love that people come up to us and they'll be like, oh, you've got the bread and butter letter. I love just being in there. Everyone's so nice and stuff like that. And we just go, job well done. You <laughs> go, girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Affirmation. Yeah. So um, the other thing we wanted was to be affordable. Um, we kind of saw um, vintage shops kind of just like skyrocketing and it was just kind of crazy like I walk into one and that you used to be able to go into and find something really awesome for really reasonable prices just now did not exist really not everywhere but just you know it was harder and harder to find something that you could really feel great about buying so we wanted to kind of like reinstate that so everything we felt was really really affordable I guess that was kind of the whole we weren't making much profit thing but um, that was just one of our values that we really really want to have in we wanted to be strictly local so all of the handmade stuff in there was all New Zealand made um, which was really really important to us because we felt like there just wasn't an outlet for that and we wanted people to feel like you know, it was really accessible because not everyone could go to markets all the time. And so we felt like it was a really good, that something was available, you know, six days a week that you could go and get something handmade rather than having to wait a whole month to go to a market and buy it. Um, which is handmade as king as well. Like that was just really, really strong to us. And um, create support and craft community. So um, we really wanted to create I guess it's part of the like teapot thing. We wanted somewhere where people could come and create things and feel like they had somewhere to go and be. Because um, there's a huge amount of people out there that hand make things and love knitting and cross stitch and all of these sort of things. So we thought it'd be cool if we could kind of gather those people together. Um, and also another thing that we started to do is we started throwing events. New slide. <laughs> um, so uh, here's two of the examples. One was called a Nana Night. Um, that's essentially where we had a couple of local bands play. Um, and what, when they were there, they could ha like get a warm blanket and a coffee or a hot chocolate from Alleluia because it was in St. Kevin's Arcade. And we had board games and we had people teaching pe 
like how to knit and to crochet and it was really cool people coming up and get, like paying to get in and then they've got their little like knitting bag we were we were really stoked with that and it's um it was really cool that we actually did it it's really nice to say these things but we were like we've we did the event that we were hoping to yeah. set out and we did it in quite a creative format i think and um this is our most recent one we've we did a garage sale market in our basement where people can sell their clothes and our market fee was just really cheap. We just wanted people to come and know that space is there and, and since then we've got people wanting to do galleries and rehearsal space and we're like, yes, 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 this is what we want. Use our basement. <laughs> Please come. <laughs> so for you guys. <laughs> yeah, we have a basement. Yeah, it's quite cool. It's got white brick but we also need it. Do more things yeah, to Yeah, I probably need to work on that. Oh, what's with that font? I know. We have a really awesome branding font, <laughs> which is just not compatible with this, obviously. Do you mind if I take this one? I'm no, real, you do I'm it. real passionate no, you do about it. this. Yeah. Okay, so examples of how being backwards is better alliteration is um, people look at these bottles in our store and they go, oh, wow, that's quite cool, yeah. And um, before they put it down, they go, wait, I must tell you this story. And I'm going to tell it to you now. That in our first store, there was a building that came down next to us. And this old man would save all these bottles he found under the foundations of the building and he'd leave them outside our door. I didn't know what it was for a long time. I was like, so yeah, you can't was put so these confused. here. Um, and then, uh, and then when we realised what was going on, we were like, "This is so neat!" And some of the bottles are like Mount Eden, 1922. You know, like these are our bottles. It was so cool. Um, and so I said to my mum, <laughs> "Put your hand up, mum. <laughs> <laughs> Put it up. Do Put it, it lady." <laughs> This is my mum. She goes to uni tech and I was like, mum, you've got to do something with these. And she was doing ceramics. So she made moulds out of them. And um, she realised that she was really passionate about making something that's one off these bottles because all of them are really different and the glazes come out different. Something that was really mass produced and used like for everyone, all of our grandparents maybe, mm. that she could turn into a one off object made for us and um, when I tell people that story it is always a sale it is always a sale <laughs> because people love the story they love that it's handmade they love that it's local and they love the history and um, yeah and I think it's a really good parallel with the store like people come in and they're pretty happy and they go is this card made in New Zealand I go everything's made in New Zealand and they're like and so they st <laughs> <laughs> they stay longer. That was a bit of a rugby move, eh? Oh. <laughs> um, they stay longer and everything is looked at more intently and, um, and they come back because everyone, and I'm sure you guys all agree, you want something from our community. It's so cool that mm. we sell this granny's cross-stitched book and this really cool graphic designer's wallet, you know, or something like that. And it's all community based and you guys want it, customers want it, we want it and we love it. And we think for business, it's a really great idea to do it that way. Um, yeah. Five okay. minutes. Oh, we're nearly, that's good, that's yeah. good. Okay, so another, um, another kind of brand or people that um, along the lines of Mahi Mahi that kind of represent what... Um, we're trying to talk about is um, informal tea, um, and it's kind of what we're all about. Um, it's the brand name, not oh the style of tea drinking. Yeah, it just it, it would be it would oh be I weird see. to look at. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah yeah yeah. So informal is the name of the company that creates the tea, <laughs> um, and basically they only choose the highest quality products, um, and. Like they don't do tea bags or anything. They only do lo loose leaf tea. Um, you really would have been better to talk about this one because you know way more about it. I'll just it. say about the loose leaf thing. Yeah. So loose leaf is w um, like having a full tea leaf. And the reason why that's better is when the water hits the tea leaf, all the nutrients that were dried and stuff get like yeah. instantly out into your tea. And so it's so much better for you. And it's Fresher. really delicious. It's not that bitter taste that you get yeah. with broken up teas that are in tea bags and they refuse to do tea bags and yeah. we say 
hey, we think a really great seller would be tea bags. And, and they, they go, no, no <laughs> we're just not going to do it. We are not going to do it because we stand by our organic thing. And so they could make so much money, but they but don't they because don't. they've got this thing. Because they've got integrity, yeah. which we once we realized that, we thought so much like more of them. You know, and we're just like, you guys are great. And now we kind of push them at any chance that we have because, yeah, they, like us, put their values ahead of money making. And in turn, we think that that actually makes a really good business. And the other th reason that we like tea is that it's a slowing down process, you know, at the end of our busy lives. And, um, you know, like the whole fact that you have to put it into a pot and wait for it to brew. We love that idea that it's just like a pause in time. And yeah, it just forces you to slow down and kind of think about what you're doing, which we really, really like as well. A pause in time, that would be a great tagline. We should tell them. We should, put, we should, do, a, we should do a Facebook ad for that. <laughs> Informal tea, a pause in time. You should do this one. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... This way? Sorry. Um, so <laughs> the whole doing business backwards thing, we kind of um, we didn't know anything about business. We just thought, hey, this would be a good way to kind of run our business. We think that values are more important than profit. And then people kind of thought that was really great. And we thought, oh, that's good. But we didn't really think much of it. But then we went to this amazing talk by Kate Billing, who's the um, head of the Karanga Happy Road Business Association. And she was doing a talk on doing business on purpose. And we thought, hey, this sounds good. We should go. And we are so glad we did. Because essentially, what how we run our business is actually a thing. And it's called <laughs> conscious capitalism. And we never knew it. And we, we didn't even know. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, this new movement is that you put your values, um, well, no, the tagline is kind of like profit and purpose go hand in hand. And if the real way to make profit is to do it, do your business with a purpose and have a reason and values and in turn that people will respect that because basically um, our social mindset has completely changed. Things used to be that people cared about how little they were spending. So they didn't care about the product itself more that, oh yeah, I can afford that, it's cheap. Whereas now it's basically people care about the story behind it. They have a more emotional and social connection with things. So um, for instance, fair trade and organic things. People will tend to buy those now rather than something that's really cheap because that's really important to them. Same as buying things locally. Um, some would, someone now would much prefer to buy something that's been New Zealand made, even though it's slightly more expensive because it's more expensive to produce than something that's been mass produced and made in China. And um, so we just kind of thought, hey, this is actually what we do. We kind of thought we were doing things real weird, but this is actually how people are starting to think. And um, other people have sort of started doing this, which people like Toyota and Google, Starbucks, like it's, it's a big thing that's happening. And that was so inspiring to us. And we were like, wow, we're actually doing something really good. And Kate was really, really like, happy and impressed with us and she was just like um, really blown away that two people that just didn't know anything <laughs> kind of like dreamed up these ideas which were actually what like she's trying to really push out there in the business world. So that just kind of encouraged us to go further and better and so um, yeah we're kind of like dreaming really big now but still based on our values and doing business on purpose and hopefully we'll make a profit. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually. Um, so just in conclusion, um, you know, everything we've said is all good and well. Um, and you guys can take from it whatever you want. But like each one of you are creative and whether you do it in business, I think if you do it with integrity or, um, you know, oh, it's dreaming. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so that font. So We're actually gangsters. Um, yeah, just I think everyone can take a little bit something and 
put it on their own. Maybe you've got a nine to five, you know, do that well if you're doing your own things. Make sure it's like the best that you can do and that, um, that uh, and your customers or your fan base will really appreciate it. And like, I, that's like the Rose Howcroft guarantee. Like 100%, all money back guarantee. <laughs> your fans will love that. And, um, and for us, doing it this way, we could be zillionaires if we had imported stuff from China. We really could have. Yeah, we really could have. But um, this way is so much funner. We get to meet lots of you who come in and say, these are the products, what do you think, or whatever, and it's so fun to be in community, it's better, because if the shop ever closed up, I can say, kudos, Sarah, you did it well, ka yeah. no, and, um, and yeah, it's, it's really inspiring as well, I don't know how we could do the shop and make the products we do without meeting people like you who come to the store mm. and show us stuff. Because it's like, wow, you're so good. How come I didn't think of that? It's so obvious. <laughs> you know, in a nice way. <laughs> um, yeah, so all in all, we love what we do and so do our customers. And mm. yeah, we think it's really neat to yeah. go backwards. So yep. thank you. Yeah. <laughs>